The Universal One by Walter Russell, Book 2, Chapter 3. New Concepts of Electricity and Magnetism. The concept of modern science regarding the mutual attraction of oppositely charged particles and the mutual repulsion of similarly charged ones is fundamentally wrong. This concept claims that positive charge repels positive charge and attracts negative charge, whereas instead, positive charge attracts positive charge and expels negative discharge. Electricity is the attractive force of this universe of integrating matter. The belief that positive charge repels positive charge is inconsistent with the accepted fact that density increases as pressure and positive charge increase. Greater density and greater pressure are both due to the power of electricity to attract electricity. If positive charge, density, and pressure increase in the direction of the gravitative center, where the attribute of attraction is at its maximum in a mass or system, and decrease in the opposite direction, which is the direction of negative discharge, it is inconsistent and illogical to claim that positive charge repels positive charge. Cohesion increases as centripetal force predominates, and positive charge increases with increasing ability of mass to cohere. On the contrary, cohesion decreases as centrifugal force predominates, and negative discharge increases with the decreasing ability of mass to cohere. There is no greater evidence of the truth of this than the known fact that any mass accelerates its speed as it approaches a mass of greater positive charge and decelerates its speed as it recedes from such a mass. Consider, for example, the acceleration of any planet or comet in that part of its eccentric orbit in which it approaches and its deceleration as it recedes from the sun. Consider the acceleration of the ball as it drops toward the gravitational center of the Earth, or the deceleration of the bullet as it is forced away from the Earth. Consider the deceleration of the atom of gas, which rises of its own accord to seek its own more negative region of low pressure. Careful consideration of these many effects of motion should convince the logical thinker that accumulation of mass is due entirely to the power of electropositive centripetal force to attract electropositive centripetal force. On the other hand, the disintegration of mass is due entirely to the expanding power of electronegative centrifugal force. As the direction of electropositive lines of force is toward the apex of a cone in a closing spiral, and the direction of electronegative lines of force is away from the apex in an opening spiral, these opposing forces cannot possibly attract each other. Modern science claims that negative charge repels negative charge and attracts positive charge, whereas, actually, negative charge repels both negative and positive charge. Magnetism is the repellent, or separative force of this universe of disintegrating matter. Man's fixed concept of magnetism as an attractive force is also fundamentally wrong. This basic error is closely tied to every meaning of the very words magnet, magnetic, or magnetism. These words are universally used in the sense of attraction. Every schoolboy has been the proud owner of that little horseshoe-shaped toy, which picked up bits of iron for his amusement. This remarkable phenomenon quite naturally built up the concept of magnetism as an attractive force. Magnetism supposedly performs these miracles. So it seems. The evidence of one's senses is again deceived by illusion. The exact opposite is the fact. The electropositive charge is merely increased, and the attraction of positive electricity to positive electricity of a similar dimension is demonstrated. This phenomenon of the power of the electropositive charge of the magnet to attract will be exactly described later when the laws of unit or opposing pressures are written down. Suffice it here to say that a magnet is a piece of iron around which so strong a generative current has been caused to circulate that the billions of little pumps which make up its atoms have been vastly stimulated to excessive zeal in performing their work. 
The pulsations are so greatly energized that the magnetic outflow is like a swift running stream in comparison with its normal flow. Thus has the positive charge been greatly increased. The axial poles of rotation and the magnetic poles have become almost superimposed. The potential and unit pressures have been raised to such an extent that another piece of iron of normal potential and pressure will be drawn into the higher pressure of the magnetic iron and its potential also raised. This will also be very simple to comprehend when the simple principles of gravitation and an exact understanding of the forces of attraction and repulsion are known. The misconceptions of modern science concerning the fundamental principles of attraction and repulsion are many and all are based upon the wrong belief that electricity is the repellent and magnetism the attractive force. Man speaks of light repulsion and cites the tail of the comet, which forever points away from the sun, as conclusive proof. This phenomenon is due to the fact that all mass rotates and revolves toward its proper pressure zone. All mass is potential out of place, and all mass constantly seeks the proper pressure zone for its constantly changing potential. All states of motion, including the tail of the comet, conform to this law. The age-long misconception regarding the supposed attractive power of magnetism must be reversed and its exact opposite substituted in its place. Much practical demonstration has contributed to the building up of the strongest foundations for the present theories. Scientists have built up wrong theories based upon appearances which deceive because they are misunderstood. Man seems to forget that this is a universe of appearances a universe of illusions, and appearances easily deceive unless one makes allowance for them in every effect of motion. Man is not easily deceived regarding those illusions which he thoroughly understands, such as relative dimensions in perspective, or the illusion of the moon racing behind the trees keeping pace with a speeding man, but he is easily deceived regarding those illusions which he does not suspect to be illusions. In order that one may know truth from the illusionary appearance of truth, the reader must remember that all objective effects of motion in form are illusions, and also that the relation between those apparent objective forms and their motion as well are illusions. All illusions will deceive if judged only by the evidence of one's senses. Not for one second does any effect of motion remain unchanged. Therefore, it is not logical that changing things can be dependable realities. There can be no unconditioned facts in a universe of motion. There can only be ever-changing appearances of facts. All states of motion are relative and deceiving. Comprehension of this universe of mind is not possible as long as it is considered a universe of dimension. Nor is it possible if its illusions are considered realities. Complexity is a drag anchor to comprehension. Comprehension of the universe is very simple when it is considered a dimensionless universe abounding in appearances that do not deceive because one knows them to be merely illusions. All matter is an effect of a basically simple and easily comprehensible cause, the thinking of mind. Man's reliance upon the reality of the illusions of electrical effects has deceived him into a misinterpretation of his observations. Just as man once firmly believed the evidence which his senses seemed to prove that the sun and stars revolved daily, so does he now firmly believe the evidence which his senses seemed to prove, that positive corpuscles repel positive and negative corpuscles repel negative, while opposites attract each other. The term negative charge is not in accord with the laws of motion. The positive electric force charges and the negative magnetic force discharges. Modern science firmly believes that there are two kinds of corpuscles. Negative corpuscles, called electrons, and positive corpuscles, called protons. This is a wrong concept. All corpuscles are doubly charged, and so are all systems and all mass doubly charged. All familiar effects of motion substantiate this statement. 
it would be absurd to say that this solar system is a positive proton surrounded by negative electrons, which are the planets. All phenomena of motion are repetitive. Mass is purely relative. An atom of manganese or iron is exactly like this solar system, with the positive nucleus concentrated, and an atom of sodium is exactly like the nebula forming in the constellation of Orion, with the positive charge extended and not yet forming a distinct nucleus. A biologist would not think of the male as wholly male, for he knows that the male, though preponderantly male, is also female. Each sex is both electric and magnetic. They are, therefore, electromagnetic in periodicity, or in other words, male-female in periodicity. Here is the law in accord with truth. Positive charge attracts positive charge and expels negative discharge. Negative discharge repels both negative discharge and positive charge. The fact that electricity expels magnetism does not mean that it repels it. Expulsion is not repulsion. Expulsion is the result of electric attraction, which causes electrically charged particles to draw closer together. This effect of closer assemblage is a centripetal effect of contraction that squeezes magnetism away from the spaces between the integrating particles of electric preponderance. The magnetic flow resulting from this squeezing process is merely the reaction to the action of squeezing. The action of electricity might be likened to the compression of a spring from within. The reaction of magnetism might be likened to the elastic resistance to that compression by an exactly opposite pressure of expansion from within. Opposite charges do not attract each other. They are opposites, and as opposites, their very natures are characteristic of all apparent opposites in the assertion of their opposition. A positive light unit, or system, does indeed attract a negative one, not because of its negative, but because of its positive attribute. One single light unit is no different than a mass such as this planet in respect to its double charge. It would be absurd to say that this planet, which is but one light unit of this solar system, and corresponds exactly to one light unit of an atomic system is either a negative or a positive unit. It is both negative and positive, and its positive charge is always preponderant in that part which is nearest to its positive nucleus, which is the sun. Likewise, its negative discharge is always dominant in the portion farthest removed from the sun, two apparently opposite forces. It must be remembered that electricity is the attractive force and that magnetism is the repellent force. The attractive force attracts only attractive force, which is itself. Electricity attracts electricity. Electricity does not attract the repellent force, nor does electricity repel the repellent force. On the other hand, magnetism, which is the repellent force, does nothing but perform its function of repelling. It does not attract itself. A repellent force cannot be an attractive force, nor can the attractive force be a repellent force. Each can only fill its own office. One attracts, thus gathering light units together into an appearance of solids of matter. The other repels, thus prying light units apart into the dissolution of solids of matter into gases and vapors. Magnetism is that force within the universal mind substance which tends to preserve the oneness of universal uniformity. Magnetism desires a formless and dimensionless universe, just as electricity desires a universe of form and dimension. Magnetism prevents the apparent separation or division of divine mind into parts, whereas electricity attempts this apparent separation. All the force of electricity is exerted in the attempt to create the illusions of form and dimension. All the force of magnetism is exerted in the attempt to destroy all illusion, all form, and all dimension. Neither force completely fulfills its desire, for each partially thwarts the other. The energy of magnetism is the elastic energy of expansion, 
a straining energy ever pushing toward the inertial line of equalized pressures which lies between any two masses, while the energy of electricity is ever pulling toward the pulsing heart, the gravitational nucleus of every mass. Elasticity. One of the outstanding characteristics of motion is elasticity, which also appears to be an attribute of the one substance. Elasticity is due to opposition. Elasticity is that force developed in the one substance of mind as a reaction to the action of electricity. It is this quality of elasticity that gives magnetism its rebounding force. This elastic, magnetic reaction, which is forever and eternally pressing against electric action, is that force which surely restores all opposed motion to inertial equilibrium. Imagine electricity as a compressed spring, with magnetism eternally ready to take advantage of any let up in the contractive force holding it in compression, no matter how slight a relaxation that may be. If one could imagine such a thing as an absolutely complete and sudden withdrawal of all electric contractive energy, the instantaneous response from this elastic counter pressure would cause a cosmic explosion that would instantly destroy all appearance of form. The universe would then be one of equalized pressures and opposed motion would be at an end. This sudden expansion is exactly what occurs when man combines two or more elements that desire to get away from each other because they are tonally too far removed from each other to be possible mates. The elasticity of magnetism takes advantage of the sudden, let up in the process of generation, and rebounds so swiftly that it instantly tears apart form that otherwise might take a million years to disintegrate. It is this force of elasticity in magnetism that is constant in its resistance to any appearance of integration into any form whatsoever. Electromagnetic Opposition Magnetism is radiative and repellent while electricity is gravitative and attractive. Magnetism repels and electricity attracts, that which electricity integrates through gravitation. Magnetism disintegrates through radiation. Magnetism acts as a brake on the wheels of electricity, resisting its generation of higher potential and registering that resistance as heat. Electricity acts as an accelerator, speeding up magnetic radiation the expansion of which is registered as cold. Electricity and magnetism are actually opposing forces that move away from each other in exactly opposite directions. Forces that depart from each other do not attract one another. Opposing forces oppose each other. To say that positive charge and negative discharge attract each other is equivalent to saying that electricity and magnetism attract each other. This would be the same as saying that centripetal force attracts centrifugal force, or that generation attracts degeneration, or that a charging body attracts a discharging one. One might as well say that life attracts death. Electricity and magnetism are opposites, and opposites move in opposite directions. One is accustomed to thinking that the male, which is preponderantly positive, attracts the female, which is preponderantly negative. It is not the negative charge of the female that is attracted to the positive charge of the male, but rather the positive charge of each attracts the other. In youth, when the attraction between opposite sexes is at its maximum, the positive charge of each sex is also at its maximum. In old age, the negative discharge increases, the disintegrating magnetic force dominates, the positive charge decreases, and as a result, the attraction between each sex for its opposite diminishes until it disappears, giving way to repulsion. The apparent attraction of each action to its reaction is due to the desire of the active force within each for accumulation, and the consequent continuation of the evolving idea of itself through that accumulation. When action is preponderant as positive charge, the form of the idea evolves. When reaction is dominant as negative discharge, the form devolves. The record of the idea of both action and reaction is registered in inertia. The chemist, when breaking up compounds, 
is accustomed to seeing a negative element seek the positive pole and a positive element seek the negative pole. He would better interpret this if he considered his elements in terms of sex and also took into account the process of regeneration of negative discharge by impact against the inertial plane between a discharging and a charging mass. When the positive charges of negative reactions are attracted to positive poles, the centrifugally dominant force is conquered by the centripetally dominant force. The negative reaction then becomes a positive action. The equalization causes reproduction. The union of an action with its reaction is always followed by the reproduction of separate actions and reactions. These reproduced actions and reactions are rebounds of the union. Magnetism opposes electricity in its desire to transform this universe into one solid, motionless, non-elastic ball of positive electricity. Electricity opposes magnetism in its desire to transform the universe into one of equalized pressures where opposites disappear into dimensionless non-opposition. Positive electricity is preponderantly electric. Positive charge attracts positive charge. Negative electricity is dominantly magnetic. Negative discharge repels both negative and positive charge, for both are electric, and magnetism repels electricity. Again, it must be stated that electricity and magnetism are not opposites, nor are they two forces. There are no opposites of anything in this universe of the one thing. Mind is the one substance. Thinking mind is the one force. If mind were not a thinking substance, the universe would be without force. It would be without life. It would indeed be a dead universe. Thinking is a positive action. To every action, there is an equal reaction, which is the opposite or negative matrix of that action. The minus charge of the reactive negative matrix is equal to the plus charge of the active positive form of the idea. The positive form of an idea is stored in inertia as a negative matrix of that form. There is but one active force of thinking mind, and that is the father force. Man calls it electricity. Electricity appears as the first action in the process of thinking and disappears like temperature, in motion, in inertia. Electricity, therefore, has no existence. It belongs to motion, not to substance. It is desire that causes the one substance to appear to change in state as it performs its function of recording the form of an idea. Opposites are born from the attempted division of unity or oneness. The very first action that attempts division of unity develops the reactionary apparent opposite that opposes that attempted division, the father force acting upon the desire of mind to create, finds that since mind is the only substance, idea and its form must be developed out of that one substance of mind. The father force, which is the image-making faculty of mind, proceeds to create the idea and then to fashion the form of that idea out of the one substance. The opposing magnetic force is then born to prevent the fashioning of the substance of mind into form. For a time, it vainly opposes such formation, but eventually succeeds. Electricity and magnetism are the two major dimensions of the universal constant of mind. Therefore, the beginning of creation is the beginning of an attempted separation of the one substance by the one force of the substance. The very attempt to divide the one substance gives the appearance of, but does not create, two substances. It only develops two equal and opposing states of motion, which man calls forces. It creates two illusions. Part of the energy used in the attempted division into two is given to each, and the sum total of this energy is the exact amount of the energy of the one. Electricity and magnetism are attributes of motion only, and as separate entities, they are but illusions of the substance of matter. Form, or solidity of matter, is an electromagnetic record of states of motion. Therefore, solidity of matter 
is but an illusion measurable by electromagnetic dimensions, which, in themselves, are but illusions. From the father force, then, is born the mother force, which man calls magnetism. The symbolism of the creation of Eve from Adam is fundamentally sound. The father force creates all ideas and gives them the appearance of form. But that idea cannot be perpetually held as an idea in the appearance of form, nor can it be reproduced without the union of the father with the mother force from which the father force has parted and with which it makes an equilibrium of unity. Both idea and the form of the idea return to motion in inertia as memory and remain there for a time as formless idea. A union of the father force with the mother force brings it back again into the form of the idea, for the united energies of these apparent opposites make the total required by the one. Just so with positive electricity and negative electricity, they are not two forces. They are but two aspects of one force attempting to separate, each by its own opposite method, thus becoming two forces. They never succeed in doing so. Each is charged with the other, permeated more or less in accordance with its periodicity. Chapter 4 Positive and Negative Electricity Again, it must be reiterated that in this universe of motion in equilibrium, all energy equalizes itself in two equal and opposite swings of the cosmic pendulum, regardless of where in the cycle those opposites of motion appear. The cosmic pendulum swings eternally between positive and negative electricity, constantly transferring its energy from one dimension to another, but never altering that constant. The opposing energies of the two swings, when added together, make up one equalized unit of the universal reproductive constant. Furthermore, these opposing swings are simultaneously equalized at corresponding points in each of the ten octaves. Electric action and its magnetic resisting reactive flow are simultaneous and in equilibrium at all times. Positive electricity is an endothermic, contractive force that actively absorbs a relatively large quantity of generative light units of heat, which raises its potential, while expelling a smaller number of them, which are devitalized into magnetic radioactive emanations, thus slightly lowering its potential. Negative electricity is an exothermic, expansive force that reactively absorbs a small quantity of generative light units of heat which slightly raises its potential, while expelling a greater number of them, which are devitalized into magnetic radioactive emanations, thus lowering its potential. In the term negative electricity, the word electricity is used in the generic sense, similar to how man is used to represent both sexes. Electropositive systems are preponderantly charging systems while electronegative systems are preponderantly discharging systems. Charging systems are in the positive half of the octave, where the tones are generatively dominant. These systems force magnetism out, causing them to grow more compact. As a result, they grow smaller, tone by tone, up to the fourth tone of the octave. Their atomic volume decreases, and their density increases as magnetism is expelled just as a sponge decreases in volume and increases in density when water is squeezed out. It must be clearly understood that magnetism, expelled by electricity from within a charging system, did not enter that system as magnetism or as negative electricity. It entered as positive electricity and became devitalized into negative electricity by nuclear absorption of its positive charge. It was then expelled from the higher inner pressure to the lower outer pressure of the system. Discharging systems are in the negative half of the octave, where the generative tones are weakened. Weakening generative activity results in weakening radioactive activity, which causes the systems to grow less compact. They therefore grow larger, tone by tone, from the fourth tone to the master tone. Their volume increases, and their density decreases as magnetism is allowed to return, just as a sponge increases in volume and decreases in density 
when water is allowed to return. By studying the charts on pages 17 and 83, it will be seen that when magnetism returns to negative systems, it does not return as negative electricity. It impacts against the inertial plane between itself and the system, is regenerated and reconverted into negative electricity after it has made its centripetal journey to the apex of its spiral orbit with ever-increasing pressure and started its centrifugal run with lowering pressure back to the inertial plane. Charging systems are simultaneously discharging, but their positive charges become increasingly preponderant and dominant until the consequent increase in potential changes the dimensions of the system. They then appear to be another substance. Discharging systems are simultaneously charging, and their negative discharges become decreasingly dominant until the consequent lowering of potential changes their dimensions. When they have readjusted their dimensions, they in turn appear to be another substance. Charging systems are preponderantly generative, male systems, while discharging systems are preponderantly radiative, female systems. Charging systems are exactly balanced by discharging systems. All systems are divided into seven tones of energy. One charging tone and its exact mate in a discharging tone balance as one unit constant of energy. There are four exactly equal unit constants of energy in each octave. An octave is one universal reproductive constant. Ten octaves constitute one cycle. Tone one positive is a charging system exactly balanced in all its periodicities by tone one negative. Likewise, tone two plus positive is balanced by tone two negative and tone three positive by tone three negative. Tone four is a double tone that is neither positive nor negative. It is bisexual. These seven tones of four unit constants make up the total universal constant of energy, which is omnipresent throughout the entirety of this universe of mind. Consider, for an example of positive charge attracting positive charge, the sun of our solar system. It is the nucleal center of this system, the point of maximum positive charge. Therefore, it is the high potential point of the system. Consider this planet. It is a doubly charged mass, meaning that it is both positive and negative. Its preponderance of positive charge is always toward the nucleal center, which means that it is always toward the light. Its preponderance of negative discharge is always away from the nucleal center, which means that it is always away from the light. The positive charge of this planet is therefore preponderant in the portion that is in daylight, and the negative discharge is preponderant in the portion that is night. The daylight portion of the planet is generative and endothermic, which means active, contractive, and heat absorbing. The daylight portion is where the potential is increasing, where flowers open their petals and thrive, where life is regenerative and vibrant. The dark portion of the planet is radiative and exothermic, which means inactive, expansive, and heat expelling. The dark portion is where the potential is lowering, where flowers close their petals and become dormant, where life is devitalized and asleep. The same principle applies to all other planets. The positive charge moves around them as they revolve, always staying as close as possible to their positive nucleus, the sun. It is a well-known fact that high potential discharges into lower potential. Consider the radiative rays of the sun as negative light units expelled by positive contraction, which forces them to seek lower pressures and lower potential. It might be argued that these negative rays are attracted by the positive charge of the daylight portion of the planet. Consider the law of pressures as stated elsewhere, which says that between any two masses is a line or plane of equalized pressures. As the light units, which constitute the rays, spiral and centrifugally circle around the sun in their search for lower pressures, just as the mass of light units that is our planet circles around the sun, they continue to expand 
and become increasingly negative the farther they recede from the sun. It should be clarified here that light rays do not proceed directly from the sun to a planet in straight lines. They follow orbital paths of lowering pressures, just as the planet does. All direction is curved, and every curve is part of an orbit. When the light units, commonly referred to as light rays, reach the inertial plane of equalized pressures between the mass of the sun and the mass of the planet, their expanded masses impact against it and continue beyond it in an ever-increasing state of solidity. These expanded negative particles, having reproduced themselves in transit, then become positively charged as they impact with and plunge gravitatively through the pressures that increasingly rise as they approach the mass of the planet. Eventually, they impact the planet as positive charge attracted toward greater positive charge. The potential of each is increased by this impact, and the heat generated by magnetic resistance to the impact is absorbed as accumulated energy until it becomes devitalized and is released as the planet turns away from the light. For another example, consider the familiar lightning flash, commonly known as forked lightning. Lightning is a highly generative, positive charge seeking its own pressure and potential. The maximum positively charged high potential and high pressure of this planet is that part closest to its center. Lightning and all its forks are gravitative, they always seek the planet. They rarely proceed in the opposite direction toward negative discharge, except in rare instances where a minor charge leaps upward toward a cloud of higher positive charge or higher potential. This latter effect is exactly analogous to an iron nail leaping upward toward a magnet, lightning seeking its own potential, and an apple falling to the ground are effects of exactly the same cause. Gravitation is the cause of each. Both are taking a shortcut across lots through intervening pressures to find their equal pressure. Later, it will be seen that the cause of rotation and revolution, together with all of their respective variations and periodicities, can only be understood through the principle that positive charge attracts positive charge and negative discharge repels both positive charge and negative discharge. Stay tuned for more chapters of the Universal One. Blessings and love to all of you.